Dan Wesson, 1911, CZ USA, SHOT Show 2012, The Nothing Fancy Project. I'm gonna break it out into some mini reviews, namely their 1911s. We're gonna do that first. Tactical Doodle, help me out. Say hello to Keith. What's up, man? Thanks for hosting us. Appreciate it. Talk to us about the Valor line of Dan Wesson. I've done some research on it. I like everything I've read about it. Good, good, you should. Uh, the Valors are flagship model of all of our Dan Wessons. Uh, especially the black versions. They're it's all a good looking 19. Oh, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. This finish that's on here uh, looks like a carbon steel gun. It's actually not. Starts life as a stainless steel gun, just like this one right here. Okay. Uh, everything in it uh, frame, slide, barrels, 416 stainless, all the parts 416. Exception of the slide stop should be 420 because they have to be stronger. Uh, the finish on it is actually our duty treat finish, and that's uh, it's actually molecularly bonded to the steel itself. Uh, no other company that I know of is doing that with 1911s. Uh, most everybody's doing a spray on, bake on, paint finish. Um, who would that, do that? Who would spray do that? Spray on, bake on finish? That's so Bush League. Mm, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no names. Anyways, no names. We've done it. Hey, We've done it. I we did it. We used to use Cerakote. I like it. Oh, I know. We used to do Cerakote. And what was your take on Cerakote? Was Cerakote it? was good, but for us, it wasn't good enough. Meaning what? Well, I, I'll tell you this. I've, I've shot some Cerakote guns. It wears off just like Derek Derek yeah. Code. Yep. I haven't seen much of an improvement myself. Right, right. Only two The biggest thing I've I found, used. it was thicker. It was yeah. thicker. But for our purposes, the uh, way we're doing it, you're going to have some finish issues going back and forth and working things in. It Plus, just, you usually have to use an off-site vendor, right? Yeah, we, we still do it with this, too. Uh, and this is a lot more expensive, but a finish on it. And you're having so tourists do better. this for you, right? Yeah, we're having tourists do this now for us. <laughs> He's you know, kidding, we're guys. We're doing everything in Brazil. No, everything's done in New York. You slap your name on it. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's the way the industry is. By the way, he's a TMP -er. Yeah. That's why I chose him. He knows what's going on in the project, and that's why he's tying in references. Yeah, pretty appreciate fun. it. Anyways, so uh, where was it? Oh, the duty finish. So, you're duty talking about finish. the thickness of the finish, too. The finish, yeah. It's impregnated actually down into the steel. Uh, it's super hard. You're, you can scratch this up, bang it up with a nail, whatever. You could take some WD-40, buff it out with some steel wool, and you're back to black and good to go. And you're doing the inside as well. The whole thing so goes, thin. yeah, it's, it goes through a whole process. Okay. Uh, it's like it goes through a bath process. It's very similar to like uh, Glock Tenifer, Melanite, something like that. Which all those finishes, we, everybody knows I love. what that's like. Tenifer yeah. rocks. Yeah. 1911s were the only ones we know of doing. Okay, so that's the finish of the gun. I, right. uh, the sights on those look like straight eight heinies. They are. They're straight eight heinies. That's uh, my favorite 1911 night sight currently. It's just such a sweet target presentation. Yeah. It's got an ultra low profile. Plus, it's got the uh, hook ledge. So if you ever need to, you can you can rack the slide without actually using your hand. Well, your one hand obviously got to hold the gun. But uh, oh, at any rate, hook ledge <laughs> oversold, overplayed, or what? <laughs> Everyone acts like if you don't have a hook ledge, dude, your gun I know. sucks. I know. You don't have a hook ledge. I, whatever. I'll through. take it. Hey, I'll take it though. It comes with it. It's free it's, of charge. Yeah, it's free of charge. I'll totally <laughs> take it. So all anyways, right. all of our parts, uh, you won't find any MIM, no plastic. Everything's either bar stock, tool steel, cast, or forged. So you're getting tours to do just the best for you on Absolutely. This We're Absolutely. kidding. They're custom shops. You know, it's doing me. everything for us. <laughs> <laughs> We're kidding, guys. Yeah, I really want to make that clear that they're making this in the United States. Yeah, it's 100% US USA USA made, USA parts, everything. you got to try the triggers on these 1911s. They're awesome. At least dry fire them. You really don't know until you yeah. actually get out and shoot it. But man, are they sweet. Doodle yep. security on the backside. Yeah, we got another Sanitizer source over there taking some action photos oh okay that so, happens yeah. we're, we're setting up all these triggers they should all fall this one feels a little heavily a actually. crisp nine pounds yeah crisp <laughs> nine pounds like i said taurus is doing it i would Anyways, guess four i yeah. pulled on those three and a half four. to four and a quarter pounds is that's a good trigger pull a Great lot of them are three and a half you know those some guys want that it's a little light some guys want them lighter but yeah. you know we say anywhere from three and a half to four and a quarter that's perfect pound. you want to screw your 1911 up especially a higher end one like this go ahead and put a bad trigger on it or one yeah. that doesn't compete or blow the competition away because yeah. yep. that's i think 1911 guys i'm speaking for myself it's a weak spot it is it's like it is. how you're going to judge the you entire pick it up and it's beautiful and you pull the trigger and then it's ugly immediately yeah. okay and, and your shootability too. I mean, yeah, if you've got an eight-pound trigger on it, you're not going to connect. See, uh, but at the same time, you put too light of a trigger on it, and you don't have a duty weapon. So yep. you got to find that balance. Yeah, See, four pounds is perfect. For instance, Doodle over there, I can put a Glock in his hand, tell him to clear the plate rack. I don't know. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I put a 1911 in his hand, say clear it. Ting 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 yep. ting. Yeah, I've seen it with yep. us too. Yep. 
I'll tell you what. Hey, yep. tell me what the slide to frame fit is on that gun. Sorry, Mr. Oh, Salesman. I'm going to have right. an unbiased Salesman. opinion right here. I'm a working man. I'm going to see your TMP or first and foremost in this All booth right. review. What do you think, dude? Slide fit back and forth. I checked it earlier. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Tight. Yeah. I mean, not so tight you're going to have No, you can't make issues. it that tight. We've all had our issues when we've been fitting oh, yeah. slides to frames. And, but no, that's perfect. Uh, he does 1911 Smith work, by the way. I don't know if you guys knew that. PFI does. It's not like his primary thing. He just does it once in a while. Yeah, that's And then he usually has to send it to another gunsmith to correct what he did. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh -huh. This Only is a when beautiful I gun. the inside of the yeah. slide rails. <laughs> that's a bust on me because I did that. Don't do that. That's bad. We, That's a good looking gun too. <laughs> Any of the components that aren't ours, we buy. Uh, so we're buying from names like EGW, Ed Brown, Cylinder and Slide. I like that. All um, that stuff. I so love that. We we used to tote their name constantly to help promote ourselves because we're small, nobody knew about us. Uh -huh. But we kind of gotten away from that. Our customers know it already. Mm -hmm. But we've also gotten into doing our own stuff. So love it. Now this these are basically the same gun. This is a stainless version, different grips, of course. Yeah, these are both have G10 grips from VZ. Um, it's just different coloration. I love just the G10 grips. Love the black one. Love it. That, this gun's this, amazing. I'm with you on that. Yeah, Beautiful. Love it. This is my top choice. Right same here. exact guns. EGW barrel, carry bevel barrel bushings, and that's something we notice our customers really want a lot lately. They're putting these in. They're recrowning the barrel, so we just offered that straight from the factory, put them in there, and we didn't get the barrel flushed right tight to the bushing because it's almost impossible unless you're doing a custom one, everyone. Yeah. And we are a production company, but we get it pretty darn close. So just to have the guys take a look at that. That is close, though. Again, I was saying trigger, but this the fit and finish on basically every aspect of a 1911 yeah. is just hypercritical, especially when a guy's spending over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I say that those guys spending four grand on a 1911, no problems. Yep. Here's our Heritage, which is a little bit lower price model. We don't have quite as many features, but you can see the difference between. That's your 100% mimed 1911. Yeah, 100% minimum plastic. Every cheap part. Is a crap part <laughs> we'll put right in there. Yeah, no, uh, what's there's your... not. There's really nothing wrong with mim. No, there's not. It's just They're second out type there, of cool. They work. It's second type of cool. It is. There, I have seen a lot of failures with mim. Really. Just because I've but worked you're with talking thousands and thousands of these. So okay. I've seen sheared parts, stuff like that. Inconsistencies with coming huh? in. Good thing. They're cheap parts. You're talking high rounds counts too, guys that are really sending rounds yeah, down their pistols. They're, busting they're competing with stuff. stuff. Yeah, they're busting thumb safeties, stuff like that. Plus, I'll see a ton of inconsistencies with warpage and everything else. We're a low volume company, so I need the best parts I can possibly get in. Which are going to be machine, bar stock, or some really high end cast parts. I've said that in tabletop too. If you're a competitor and you're sending lots of rounds down range, it's probably best to buy forged. Yep. Or, uh, Absolutely. That kind of, just spend the extra money. Yep. If you got a you know you're going to have high rounds counts going through your pistol. You spend it now or spend it later. There you go. That the I, I think that's a good. And not to take away, you know, from looking at the Valors, but just a quick look at the Heritage. Yeah. This is basically internal wise, it's the same gun. Okay? You're not getting all the little nicety features. The back strap isn't as nicely checkered. Uh, you're getting cold rubber grips instead of G10 grips. All these are price points. The finish on it isn't the same. You can see this is a lesser quality finish than something you would get on the valve. Yeah, it sucks. I'm embarrassed you to sell that. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I'm this kidding, is, it looks fine. I like the polished flats on that. Yeah, so that's yeah. And do you have the serrated? Uh, yeah, you do still have the serrated top. We offer the serrated top on See, these both we got don't the, have that one. Oh, really? The Valor doesn't have that no. on there. We went for the Valor, we went with a more classic, classic 1911 profile. Yep, yep. <coughs> but with the Heritage, we wanted something we could offer our customers at a lower price point. They could add on to later, but still have a high quality gun. I like it. That's a really There's great Still the same plan. small parts. There's no MIM, no plastic. It's just still a high quality gun. And it's, you know, you're looking at around $1,100 for this, as opposed to, what do we say, $1,600 for this. Uh, show us a Magwell real quick. Yep. Got it. Semi bevel, actually beveled Magwell there. Yeah, that's nice. There you go. Obvious. And what magazine does it include? It includes uh, Checkmate Max, two of them. Eight rounders, right? Eight rounders. Sweet. Yep. Okay, let's go down the line. We showed you the uh, RZ45 Heritage, yep. Dan Wesson Valors, both colorations uh, with those no, beautiful straight eight, eights. 
Here's a PFI spade, the V-Bob. The V-Bob. I love it. That is a very comfortable gun Same gun. Hand. Same gun as a full-size Valor except commander length, four and a quarter inch. Uh, all the same features exactly. We also have the Ed Brown bobtail uh, checker mainspring housing on there. Sick. A lot of guys love the feel of that gun. We used to have a C-Bob, which was really popular. We decided we were going to do the upgrade, drop the C-Bob, added some extra features, and that made it a V-Bob Valor. Those are wicked grips on there. Look at that coloration. Doesn't it look like That's rattlesnake? Awesome. Beautiful. It looks like rattlesnake grips. Those are G10. What brand of grips are those? They're from VZ. VZ. Okay. And I pulled the trigger on that. I would say about three and a half pounds. Be my guess. Yeah, I didn't test it, but the other ones I felt are about that same. Tritium dots and the straight eights there. Just a beautiful steel framed commander size bobbed tail 1911. Absolutely. Yeah. If we could just get it reliable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it threw me, I know. Actually, the Valors, I'm not trying to blow my heart. I'd be He's going to hurt himself snapping around so quick. Uh, the Valors, we've had a lot of good luck with. Uh, most people don't Out of box, no problem. You know, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've been shocked at how many jams I've had with 1911s. Even yeah. yeah. New ones. They're we've seen it out in the desert. They're out of the box yeah. lately. See, they do take some breaking. I mean, I won't lie to you, these are tight guns. They're going to take, you know, you're going to have to go out there with some ball. Okay, so what's uh, your break-in point? 200 rounds? Yeah, about two, 300 rounds. And the cool thing is CZ USA buys the ammo for we you during that break-in We'll buy it. You'll get a voucher. You know, you send it in. We'll send you a free case of ammo. Of wolf. Yeah, wolf ammo. Wolf you're right. Ammo through, a, through your yeah. yeah. $1,500 uh, 1911. Get ready yep. to say AK. I don't know why. Okay. What's up with those grips? Those look pretty cool. Now, this is our shadow grip, and this is our CCO. Uh, it's an officer size frame with a command length slide. Uh, this is kind of a mix of parts. You're still getting the same quality of parts. Uh, this is actually a little bit older version. The newer version actually does come with the EGW carry bevel version. Uh, carry bevel bushing. Yeah. So it would be just like on the Valors. Okay. Um, the gun itself would have kind of embarrassing to be on the video, but it, some of these... Too paper, late! This is an older gun. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to this life. is actually Been from 2009. So some of these parts are like circa 2009. They've had upgrades. Like, Fair uh, enough. The guys don't care as long yeah, as you tell them. You'll have different... smart audience. You'll have uh, this style ledge uh, slide stop, which is ours. You'll get our thumb safety. Okay. You'll get the checkered mag release. Let me say this too real quick, uh, Keith. Is this safety is perfect in its oh, resistance. Some say the actuation. It's perfect. On every 1911 on this rack. It's not... It's it doesn't snick off easily, and that's been a problem with my own 1911 shooting, which I suck at. But I mean, I'll pop that safety on. Yeah. I'm not paying attention. Yeah. And okay, you're supposed to ride your thumb on it. I shoot that way too, but yeah, I, I just like I it don't. to be, yeah. you know, very uh, positive like these. Yeah. This is available in 45 only. Uh, that's mainly what our customers okay. want. The idea behind it being you can conceal the gun, the length of the barrel really doesn't matter. Um, Person for me, the shorter, the shorter grip. Yeah, like, that's what you're trying to hide on your shirt, whatever. That's the way most guys are carrying it. Doodle, here we come. Plus, we bob the mainspring housing just to try and get oh, rid of that cool. sharp corner. Yeah. We offer a chain link pattern on the front and back for that model. Okay. Uh, Speaking of carry 1911s, <laughs> let's swing around to the other side and show them that one that okay. we love. Yeah, we've got the ECO or the Echo. ECO. Whatever you ECO. Want to call it. ECO. ECO. The Elite Keep Carry. Keep doing a good job, CZ USA. Give him a raise. CZ. Yay, that'd be great. <laughs> Give him a raise, brother. All right, hey, we got better lighting on this side. Yeah. We should have been around here the whole yeah. time. Well, anyway, dude, <laughs> we were guns. Anyways, ECO, the Elite Carry Officer. Love this gun. Officer length there, frame and slide. slide. Awesome. Three and a half inch barrel. And that's a true three and a half inch barrel. Okay. Uh, dust covered barrel muzzle. Uh, single spring system on this. I don't like the double spring systems. I don't find any that are good. I don't like changing out the springs every 500 rounds. This is a single spring, flat wire spring, rated for 15,000 rounds. Nice. Steel frame. Alloy frame. Alloy frame. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminum frame and mainspring housing, checker 25 lines per inch. Uh, steel slide and barrel. Tried to cut down in as much weight as possible, that's why it's we chamfered really and tapered nice the edges. Opened up the ejection port just for help and reliability with a shorter barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been really fun. Uh, the 9mm is a blast to shoot, There's hardly any recoil out of it. 45 obviously is a little bit more snap, but. You know, a lot of, most of our sales are going for 45 because people want to carry a 45. That's kind of the whole reason they do it. Yep. Bushing list there. Yep. Bushing list, bull barrel. I can take that off a little bit, show you guys the inside a little cool. bit. Cool. Yeah. Uh, this will be as compact brush. as possible. Excuse me. Pardon my voice. Okay. Cracking a little bit. 
Uh, everybody hits everyone. This thumb safety, totally. some people will notice in the pictures, it's a little wide. And that's our standard thumb safety. When we actually thinner. go into production, it'll actually be a little bit thinner. Okay. Overall width be an inch and a quarter. Nice. Okay. And these, again, are thin, slim uh, G10 grips from VZ. Love them. Got a oh, I like logo all those G10. Yeah, all of them, but most of them are pretty pretty great. So we've got a great track. Solid guide rod with a flat recoil spring system. There you go. That's what you're talking about. Yep. And I'll be a competitor against a Springfield EMP yeah. subcompact. Yep. Yep. That's a direct competitor. Yep. Price-wise, do you know which one would beat? Uh, they would beat probably. We're on the fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars. Did you mark. tell me already? Is that one hundred percent U.S. made? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Is Springfield? I forget the EMP. Or is it offshore? I thought I it was Brazilian. EMP. I don't know. I think I the EMP was U.S. But U.S. Okay, that's a great gun. The EMP is yeah. a great gun. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I should mention that all of our aluminum frame guns uh, do have a ramp barrel, just because we don't want the. Why are you the, shaking, man? It's just us. We're friends. Oh, you know. <laughs> Pump. Blood's running. Coffee. Look how quick he field strip that though. Yeah. Expert. Okay, we got Dan uh, Weston, specialist. Done These couple. grips are amazing. They are cool. Yep. Operator 2 is from see, ZZ. See, I really like the low-profile rail on that, and the Valor line is more the classic 1911 line, right? Correct, correct. Uh, Quality-wise, do we got MIM in here? No. Ambi safety on that one, I see. Yep. Uh, those are not really Heine Straight A's proprietaries. On right, those? no, they're not. They're uh, just like on ECO. Very similar. Um, very similar. That. We kind of designed our own. Low uh, mount. Dovetail. Low mount. Standard dovetail, so you could put like a Novex style sight. Like, okay. On it too. Nice. Uh, price on this specialist right here? Uh, I think it's around 1300 Okay, so we're right around where the Valors are, right? Right. Right in the close, same ballpark. So also is it quality-wise in the, in the Dan West lineup, is it about the same quality level on price point slash quality level? Uh, all the quality is basically the same. Uh, the lower price models, you'll get a little less quality and finish, not much. Um, but the lower price models, you'll have like, we don't have this fine of checkering on Yeah, what you're well. saying on the other side. Yeah, it's just okay. the parts, you know, it's, it's what you're getting in. Everything is just to the same spec. But, you know, some of the parts cost Second a little bit more. Second kind of cool, and you're talking the very fine details. Yeah, the very fine details. Stuff. And this, again, is it our duty finish, just like on the Valor, on the Black Valor. So that's the highest quality baked on Krylon paint that yeah, Absolutely. Yep, you got it. Yep, it's good Krylon, stuff. exactly. We're top yeah, they've actually improved Oops. a lot. <laughs> no, we're kidding, of course. That's yeah. the same stuff he told us That's a while another thing the right side. there. If somebody wants to put laser grips on it, because of our finish, that's pretty tough to take down the slide stop, so we already do that for you. Okay. So it's flush with the frame. Yeah. So your laser so you grips... have a pin sticking out. Yeah, because right. yeah. otherwise your laser grips would hit on that pin, and, and that's going to interfere. Right. So we do that ahead of time. Out comes the Dremel tool in the yeah. PFI shop. Been yeah. there, seen yeah. it. A yeah. couple race guns, Elite Series Titan, Havoc, uh, not interested. Hey, actually, stay tuned. We'll talk more about the PO7 here in the Ned Fancy Project. I think we covered it. There we go. Anything else you want to say about yeah, it? I think we're good, and I appreciate it. Cool, man. TM Peer and CZ USA 1911 Dan Weston, specialist Keith Lawton. You did a great job, dude. Thanks a lot. Thanks appreciate a lot. It. This is the Ned Fancy Project. Dan Weston, PFI Dude, Tactical Doodle, out. We're out.